Hello and welcome back to Tech Week TV, powered by Callahan Innovation. My name is Jake Miller, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, today's session is on funding and capital raising, and I'm very honoured to be joined by the CEO of Callahan Innovation, Vic Crone. Uh, I'm joined by Robbie Paul, the CEO of Icehouse Ventures, and also uh, by Oren, the CEO of Ideality Roads. So thank you guys so much for being here. Pleasure. It's very much appreciated. Yeah. So to be here. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about, you know, how to success raise capital and scale your business faster um, you know there's so many different perspectives and insights that, that you guys are able to offer so it's going to be it's going to be a fascinating conversation so to start off Vic you know New Zealand has such a, a vibrant startup community and there's, there's a lot of different ways companies can go about raising money so tell us a little bit about the ecosystem and, and what Callahan Innovation in particular is doing to support startups trying to raise capital and scale in New Zealand absolutely well you're right we have a really vibrant ecosystem and actually capital is one of the biggest factors in terms of holding back our businesses from scaling what are world-class ideas that can make a real difference on the world stage. So there's lots that we do um, around this and um, and I'll let you get cracking with Robbie and Oren because they've got some fantastic, they're actually in you know, doing this with businesses. So yeah, they've got some yeah. fantastic experience to share as well. Yeah. Um, essentially, we uh, support accelerators and incubators across New Zealand. Yes. Uh, it's a great place to go take your idea um, and be exposed to how you can develop your idea using, using rigorous processes yeah. and also through that process be exposed to investors along the way. Absolutely. And we've got our tech incubator um, RFP that we're about to release soon actually, which right. is about a deep science um, technology commercialisation. So that's super exciting. Very we exciting. also run some education programs like in the capital education space yes. in regards to helping businesses understand you know what, what sorts of uh, capitals out there and how they need to think about it and particularly it's really important to think about it from a long-term perspective sometimes our New Zealand businesses are a bit short-term focused and it's yeah. really hard to get to the next stage so they can compromise in terms of the deal that they do just to get money which can hurt them later right. um, of course we've got a few other mechanisms like the R&D tax incentive that's coming in yes. uh, and projects grants uh, that help businesses get their ideas off the ground and we contribute to funding there. And finally, which we can come back to a bit later, uh, is we've just launched a platform called Scale Up New Zealand, yes. which is a, a great place for uh, technology and innovation based startups to put their business on so they can kind of get eyeballs on what they're doing. Right. And also in there they can see who's investing in New Zealand, whether that's you know angel investors or um, VC capital um, or even you know philanthropic investors. So yeah. there's a lot happening at Absolutely. Callahan Innovation to yeah. support a really important part of our ecosystem. So many different pathways. And, and, yes. and Scale Up, we were just talking about in the last session as well, so scaleup.nz is the domain and that essentially is about connecting these businesses with investors and showing the businesses right. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. It's very cool. So yes. you should, guys should check that out. And you know, more broadly, I guess, what what are other options? You know, the entrepreneurs and founders should consider when determining how to go about raising capital. Yeah, well, there's lots of options, um, yeah. and these two gentlemen will talk more about them. So yeah. you know, early on, um, the, uh, angel investment in New Zealand has grown phenomenally. And, yes. And Robbie can talk a lot more about that. Yeah. Um, over the past decade or so, in terms of the number of or well, the amount of investment that's been putting in on early ideas. Um, you you know, you've got the likes of Icehouse Ventures out there, and we've got our own venture capital funds. Um, we partner with NZ Fifth. Um, and NZTE, so there's opportunities through that. So Absolutely. there's a lot, and I think it's really important that um, that startups uh, really understand uh, what their business is, the value in it, how to pitch it, yeah. and educate themselves on how to navigate yeah. through those different investment options. Yeah, and all these worlds colliding with Callahan, providing so much amazing education and pathways mm -hmm. mixed yes. with what you know, Icehouse Ventures and other groups are doing to actually provide the capital. It's like becoming right. really exciting the ecosystem. So yeah, yeah, thank you. Let's talk more about let's talk more about the uh, the new Icehouse Ventures startup fund you announced last month. So tell me about uh, the fund and sort of what the uh, you know what the idea is and you know how entrepreneurs can take advantage of this new fund. Yeah, so Icehouse Ventures is the parent entity of all the investment groups that we run. Um, it's a partner of Callahan, um, both through the accelerator program with Flux and through the uh, founder incubator program yes. um, through the whole family. Uh, essentially, all we want to do is invest in high quality companies and empower them to um, take on the world, right? And we do that with a number of um, a number of uh, different approaches. Everything from First Cut Ventures, which has uh, it's student powered and invests specifically in founders under 30, um, to the Flux Accelerator that works with a, in a programmatic form with um, early stage digital startups, um, to Tuhua Ventures that can invest up to two million dollars in a in a given company. 
Okay. Um, so it's a it's a broad family that we uh, that we run through Ice House Ventures. Yeah, yeah. And what is uh, to, uh, I'd love to understand a little bit more about the process that that founders go through when pitching to any of these different vehicles and the best way to get in touch and how to prepare to make them. I, I guess ensure they're prepared when they come and talk to you. Yeah, I think the first thing to note is it's a very iterative process. So this is not. Um, this is not formulaic, and, and that's not just driven by the investor community, that's driven by the founder community, because every founder has his or her own mission, own, um, own objectives, own sort of idiosyncrasies, um, and investors need to a- acclimate to that in many ways. Um, I'd also say that you know, if, if you think about like a due diligence process, it should be both ways, yeah. right? Founders, we've invested in 165 companies. I can only remember one that specifically asked for reference checks on us. And I think every founder should do that. Um, they should say, how many company, companies have you invested in? When they came back for more capital, were you there for them? What are the challenges that um, you faced with those companies? Um, how many years have you been investing? How many, um, how many sort of war stories have you um, experienced? Because yeah. um, that's all really important if you're trying to bring in money, that the people that are bringing money in uh, for you um, have more to bring. That's very good advice, yeah. And we, we spoke a little bit earlier in the day and you were saying how it's quite industry industry agnostic in terms of the type of companies and there's companies from all across the board. But what would you say are the, the, the attributes that are consistent across all of the companies you're looking to invest in? Uh, well, yeah, the first is always some high quality people exploiting something that they know well. Um, that's really powerful for us. So. Uh, If you look at Mike Cardin building an HR software company when he had built previously an HR software company, um, he's not only um, targeting an industry he knows well, he's targeting a business model that he knows well. Um, When you look at Mint Innovation, which has been supported by Callahan, um, those are founders that have come out of Lanzatech that take waste and create value. Um, In in Lanzatech's case, they they take gas from steel mills. and. In Mint's case, they take e-waste, um, which is circuit boards from old phones. Um, and so they're, um, they're not making, uh, making up a model in, in their head. They're um, exploiting something that they've learned about and they think they can um, build upon. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the things you mentioned is sort of someone knows, knows the problem intimately and anyone can answer this question, but I'm keen to understand more about certainly one of the trends we notice from the interviews that we do in America is a lot of founders and venture capitalists talk about founder market fit. You know, why is that person the right person to solve that problem? Like, how important do you think that is? Or can any good entrepreneur, uh, you know, solve any problem? Well, yeah, it absolutely helps if you're exploiting a space that you, um, if you know well, right? Um, but you have to be multifaceted as a, as a founder. And so um, that does not always mean keeping your head down, doing research on something that, um, that you understand and you're passionate about, right? It could mean um, dealing with HR issues or trying to attract a head of growth in a foreign country that you've never been to um, or, or um, raise a different type of funding that you're not used to. So um, high quality people are, are, are more often sort of Swiss army knives that have one very effective um, tool but also um, have to tackle a lot of different challenges. Yeah, yeah. And w- what, what place do you think accelerators play in this? You know, because um, there's different ways, you know, you can join an accelerator early yep. or you can raise funds from private angels. You know, what, what do you think consideration should go into those different approaches? Accelerators are, are massive players in this space and offshore. You don't have to look um, yeah. very far to see the impact that they, they make. And fundamentally, accelerators are there saying, hey, we will take the bold and brave step on a high pedigree founder, right? Uh, because often you could you could be targeting something that, that's interesting. You could be going after a global market, and yet you've got no financials, you've got no team, you haven't raised any money, um, you really have no idea, and you need somebody to give you that leap of faith. Yeah. And I think five years ago when Callahan set up Lightning Lab, that was that for New Zealand. It yeah. said, "Hey, we're going to give you um, an opportunity." Now, fast forward to this morning where you saw Narrative announce that their seed round, as part of the Flux Accelerator, was backed by Founders Fund. Uh, which is um, you know, a billion dollar fund out of Silicon Valley, yes. uh, I'd say we've, we've come a really long way. Absolutely, yeah. And Aaron, I want to talk more about um, you know, the government's pilot tech incubator program. You know, it's produced dozens of, of high-performing startups, and you've been involved with that program right from the very beginning. So how does, you know, I just want to understand a little bit more about how does New Zealand's startup sort of scene ecosystem compare to other countries like Israel, for example? Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm involved in the... Um in the tech incubator since 2014, and actually that's going even uh, backwards to uh, 
2011 to the first uh, visit, first time that this discussion was, uh, was brought uh, to New Zealand. And uh, there is one thing you, you should be very proud of Kiwis, which should not take for granted, uh, and probably many of you do not know it. New Zealand is the only country ever succeeded to implement this policy, uh, and there are dozens of delegations, dozens of government trying to copy-paste, filling one after the other. And in that sense, New Zealand has achieved uh, greatly by being able to take this policy, uh, take it through the uh, pilot stage and, and now uh, 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 continuing that. Um, comparing to Israel, um, Israel and New Zealand are very similar economies in the sense that uh, uh, they are both isolated countries. Um, economies are in the same, in the same ballpark. Um, New Zealand is about 10 times bigger than, uh, uh, than Israel. Um, Israel is about twice as much as people. Uh, Israel GDP is about twice as much yeah. as in New Zealand, um, which makes the GDP per capita quite similar. But when we are looking at the scene of tech companies, well, today there are like 6,000 6, 6, uh, 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 companies in Israel compared to 600 uh, in New Zealand. If we are uh, looking at startup uh, per 10,000 people, there are like 7.8 referring to 1.2 in New Zealand. And maybe the most important uh, 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 element is investment. In 2018, there was like $6.4 billion of investment in Israeli startups compared to a bit less than $144 million uh, in New Zealand. So that's give us the, the difference yeah. in the scales between the, between the two countries. What can we learn from that? Uh, well, in Israel, the equivalent uh, uh, organization to Kalan Innovation is the Innovation Authority. And the Innovation Authority um, is responsible for the entire research and development within orientations of commercialization. Now, they do addressing this, this issue in kind of a strategic way. Uh, they have built like more than 40 uh, R&D programs, 40 policies that supporting the entire life cycle of tech companies. From an IP to an IPO, from the moment that a knowledge is being created to the moment that this company was IPO or mergers uh, or by, brought by, by investor, they are calibrating the risk uh, of those investments uh, so, mature, so young companies uh, could get more assistance, right. uh, uh, more risky companies can get more assistance and as much as they are reducing the risk than government participation. But you can try to imagine that like this is like a runway and entrepreneurs can see the beginning, can see the end and they can, uh, and they can have support in, in every stage. Yeah. Uh, and investors could find opportunities in, in every stage uh, from an IP to an IPO. So that's, that's kind of uh, yeah. the main uh, the main things could be learned. Yeah, and I'm keen to touch on that with you, Vic, because obviously you've only been in the in Callahan for not, not too long, but some of the innovations and the stuff you're working on is really exciting, as you spoke about. Like, what are the biggest things that you want to bring to life over the next three or four years that you think will have a massive impact on the ecosystem here? Well, I think um, number one is a lot more connectivity across the ecosystem. So yep. accelerators and incubators are also yep. fantastic because they connect ideas and entrepreneurs into yeah. capability as well as investment in terms of what they need. So the likes of our sectors team and Scallop New Zealand yeah. is exactly about, you know, within the New Zealand market, you know, fostering and, and supporting that connectivity because, yeah. Yeah. you know, out of that then entrepreneurs can get more access to the things that they need. And then yeah. we work with NZTE really closely who do the same, you know, into yeah. international markets. So that's, that's a big part. And number two is um, investment. So, you know, this conversation is really important to New Zealand. So we know roughly we're about half a billion dollars down in terms of the capital needed for our companies to take their ideas and grow globally. So that's why the announcement by Icehouse Ventures was so fantastic. And I think we'll continue to see more and more activity and uh, invest, more investment yeah. being available to our startups. We're hugely supportive of that. Um, and then there's like, um, things like um, the R&D tax incentive, which is great. What we need alongside that is access to technical skills for our businesses. So in fact, 
that one of the biggest issues they have is they have a, a great idea, but they can't find all of the skills they need right. to execute that idea. Yeah. And so uh, working with things like student grants to get that capability into founders' hands mm. to be able to grow their, you know, quite often quite technical ideas is really important. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating it's insights. A, it's a few yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, no, it's really exciting. And I was just going to say on your point um, around the shortfall of capital of a, about half a billion dollars, I, I was talking about it in the session this morning as well. That um, I'm keen to understand your opinion on this because there's a lot of money in this country. Like, there's a lot of very wealthy people that it wouldn't take a lot of people to pull together a half a billion dollars in terms of, you know, some of the cash that exists with some very deep pockets from people that have done very well. So, what can we do to encourage, you know, some of these New Zealand billionaires to, to, to start investing? in this space and secondly maybe Robbie can answer the second part what would be the best structure for that money to yeah. actually ensure that it's allocated correctly yeah so I think you know we're the youngest country in the world yeah. so it, it does take a little bit of time for our market to grow and we yeah. are seeing more and more successful entrepreneurs who have exited reinvesting and the yeah. growing the pie report exactly. that we released you know about six or seven weeks ago yeah. um, really helped understand that they are they are exiting their organizations and then investing yeah. in new ideas and, yeah. and spreading that uh, money out so um, in terms of structurally how it you know how yeah. it comes across I'll hand over to Robbie yeah look the first the most important thing about any structure is that it also taps into the expertise that these people have I mean the number of amazing Kiwis that have been offshore um, built big companies uh, built large local companies had immense success that's what we need as much as the capital because you can find capital uh, locally and offshore if you if you really want it Exactly, and, yeah. Um, I think the other comment I'll make on structure is if you look back five years or ten years and you ask why more high net worths haven't invested, you have to look at the products that they had um, on offer. One was become an angel, which works for people who have time as well as money. But if you're not based uh, locally or you're working full time, that's a big ask. Um, the second is write a large six figure check into a fund. Yeah. Um, and that prices a lot of people out. Even if they have the money, they don't have the sort of emotional elasticity, if you will. Yeah. And uh, look at uh, some of the funds that we've built where you can put 50 grand in across um, 25 or more companies. It's a totally different uh, game. It's almost a magnitude change. It's making so, it more accessible. Um, right? But it's a, we're early days and so is the rest of the ecosystem. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think you're so right that there are some people that are, as you both say, giving back you know, more. Vic, Vic and I had a great dinner with um, a bunch of entrepreneurs, one of which is Peter Hewlich last yeah. year, and he's a great example of somebody that has invested a lot of money in tech companies and done a lot to help grow the, the, the ecosystem. But it was interesting because I, I was interviewing Peter Beck recently, and he, you know, his big thing is, uh, you know, if you've got a good idea, money's easy easy to get. That that what you want is the strategic investors that can actually help you grow your company. So I want to talk more more with you about that, Oren, and sort of how Kiwi investors, uh, sorry, Kiwi companies rather can attract the, you know, these investors that can truly strategically help your business. Whether these whether these are investors from New Zealand or offshore. Yeah. So, so in in Israel today there are like uh, 500 uh, uh, MNCs. Uh, and those are covering the, the entire the entire uh, uh, scope of of, of, uh, of, of activities. Um, the only thing that brings those MNCs to Israel is the opportunities. There is no there is no subsidies or no amount of money that that, that will bring them. So what New Zealand need to do is to create opportunities for those MNCs uh, to come to uh, New Zealand. Uh, and the uh, second things uh, that New Zealand should be do. Uh, in order to make those uh, uh, to, to increase the uh, presence of those MNCs in New Zealand, um, is create startup companies, the growth of those startup companies, and then spread the news. Because Kiwis got this uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, idea that they are that they are hiding the success, and and, yeah. and, and success should be should be should be uh, more public because success are the things that we incentivize and uh, incentivize the, the young generation to try and, and to try to follow and there is no university that teaching those uh, those kind of things and just lately as Vic was mentioning there was uh, uh, there was the uh, scale up New Zealand yeah. that was that was published uh, and this is a platform that was developed by startup nation central in, in Israel and that is kind of a kind of a hub that connecting uh, investors entrepreneurs MNCs all of them to talk to one to another and create those or connecting those dots that eventually will create the business and having connections from New Zealand uh, to, to an MNC 
could shorter the success it's or the really pathway nice. to success. And yeah. I think just building on that point, you know, what we do see is when a, a New Zealand company is connected, um, particularly through investors internationally, yeah. so either, you know, potentially purchased by an MSC or, you know, partially owned or and there's lots of other ways as well, is that their productivity and performance does lift. Yeah. So it is that access, you know, which is what's really happened in Israel with yeah. so many multinationals, that access to a global economy yeah. and yeah. that global thinking, um, the much more in tune with the pace of technology change yeah. mm. and then all the knowledge around the markets that they're in across the world yeah. is, is and, really powerful. And we should celebrate as well, I think, like like Kiwi companies and companies from smaller countries exactly. leaving, the, leaving that country to go and take on the world. Mm. I, I can't tell you the number of founders of billion dollar companies I've interviewed from Israel in yeah. America. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like at yeah. least five or ten yeah. is like unicorn Israeli founders that came from exactly. Israel to expand companies like Taboola and Funbox and I can go on. Exactly. Um, so I think it's something to be celebrated. So last question, I'm just conscious of time. Um, in a couple of words each, you know, for all of the entrepreneurs watching this, um, your best bit of advice for raising capital, that's what the session's about. So people that want to go out there, pitch to investors, get money on board, get the right investors. And in a couple of words, starting with you, Robbie, what would you say? Uh, in Two words, uh, ask founders, right? Ask the ones that have done it before. You'd be amazed how open they are, right? Uh, they, and uh, this is more than two words. <laughs> no, no, it's good though, it's good. You keep, carry and, on. And second, you know, don't, you know, don't just chase the, the founders that have built and sold companies, right? Find somebody nine months ahead of you, right? They've just gone through the, uh, the challenges of raising money. Um, they know the ecosystem, right? So they're the ones you can learn from. Great and advice. they're easy to find. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Aaron? Ignoring from skeptic people, uh, <laughs> practically. Uh, and um, aim to the moon. Wars come to wars, you will hit the stars. That's the idea. Think global and think global from day one because New Zealand potential market, which is half of Israel, and Israel is zero. So half of zero is still zero. So become or, or aim to be global from day one. Yeah. Uh, and this is a mindset, this is a practice. Uh, and uh, New Zealand uh, startups are developing those, uh, those kinds of skills. Uh, and I can tell you that, uh, uh, that New Zealand ecosystem uh, is closing the gap by yeah. the assistance mm -hmm. of Kalan Innovation uh, with regard to, uh, uh, to this entire domain. And two pieces from me, so be strategic, yes. like think a few steps ahead rather than just the next million bucks you need, yeah. um, uh, and be bold. Yeah, great advice, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank and you, uh, Yeah, special thanks again to Callahan Innovation for, for helping fund this week. I think it's a, a fantastic initiative, and there's so much that people are learning and are going to learn throughout the week from amazing people such as yourself. So thank you for taking the time. I think just once again, I wanted to reiterate the, uh, the Scale Up NZ platform, that Scale Up dot NZ. That's a fantastic resource that I recommend you all go and check out uh, in the process of, uh, you know, building innovation and raising capital. So we'll see you soon for the next session and thank you so much for tuning in. If I had a mission statement for New Zealand, it would be a place where talent can thrive. <laughs>